everybody, and welcome to MoCo's Most Famous Podcast. My name is Joe Yashiroff. I'm the Director of Content at Montgomery Community Media. We yeah. often profile uh, prominent folks from Montgomery County, and today we have a very special guest who played football and lacrosse and basketball at, at Quince Orchard and then at Navy, and now he's at TCU, and in a few days he'll be playing in the National Championship game of college football. He's got an amazing story. Johnny Hodges, uh, welcome, and uh, you're in You're in the Final Four. You're playing Michigan. Uh, obviously, you guys were the underdogs, and, and you're used to you're used to that role. And uh, I want to know um, the feeling of beating Michigan, 51-45, incredible game, uh, in a game where you were not expected to to compete or or win the game. How how did that feel? Um, you know, it felt great. Just you know, going out and doing something that other people don't think you're going to do or accomplish feels great. But uh, the people in the room knew we had we could easily win that game if we just played hard, played well, did what we we're supposed to do. And then, uh, you know, we went on the field and executed well enough. We let up a, a bunch of points, especially in the second half. But, you know, got the win. That's all that matters. Felt great and uh, short-lived because we're on to the next one now. Yeah, you, you sound like a, like a football player or like a football coach. You know, you can, you can celebrate that for a few minutes and now you're on to the, uh, the next one. <laughs> which happens to be the national championship game. So did you ever imagine uh, going to TCU that you'd be playing in the national championship game? Uh, no, I was just – I was so happy when they uh, first reached out and offered me that I was, you know, just living on a dream there. I, I, me and my buddies went out when they offered and had a good time and celebrated. And, uh, you know, I knew I was going to play big-time football, and I knew I'd – a chance to play big, big time games, meaningful games, but I, I did never in my wildest dreams think, uh, you know, I'd be playing the national championship this time last year. But uh, since it's here, like you know, it's here. It's going to happen. We're going to play well. We're going to play hard. Can't wait. Do you feel good about how the nation now has seen TCU and and can realize that while it's still a surprise that you were in the Final Four, that you beat Michigan, that there is legitimate talent on this team, and that it's not that it's not as fluky as some might think it is. Um, yeah, I guess so. I, I, I mean, you know, there's always going to be doubters and the media still isn't, you know, bought in and a lot of people aren't bought in, but, uh, there's no denying we have talent on our team. I mean, we have an exceptional quarterback. Our offense is playing great. We have wide receivers that are, you know, really, really good. We got defensive players that are, can fly and run around and yeah. So they definitely see we have talent. I, I mean, you'd love for there to be more respect, but at the end of the day, like who cares? It just gives you more of a chip on your shoulder. So. And, and uh, we, we've talked to many uh, guys with chips on their shoulder. I know we talked to Jake Funk, same kind of story. He's only a three-star athlete. And then uh, he ends up, you know, with the Rams and then won the Super Bowl last year. So there's some there's some parallels there. Um, of course. Okay, so I want to go back now. So you're, you're from uh, Darnstown. You go to Quince Orchard. You're a three-sports star. You excelled at football, basketball, and lacrosse. Which, which was your best sport, do you feel like, in high school? Well... I can definitely say that uh, basketball is not my best sport. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I just played my senior year, and I remember I was walking in the hallway. We just won the state championship, and Coach Foringer, the coach at the time, came up to me and uh, was like, are you playing basketball or what this year? And I didn't even know he knew who I was. <laughs> but I, I played for, like, I-270 and stuff growing up, and I, I was pretty good when I was a little kid. So I guess he was, you know, hoping I'd play, and I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? then one play it so it definitely wasn't basketball but uh you know I was I was pretty good at uh football and lacrosse um I mean I made all met for football so that was pretty cool and then lacrosse I got injured and stuff my senior year so I couldn't play but I was I was a big part of the team so yeah. um I don't know one of those jobs I was pretty good at both all right so now you're you're waiting for these offers to come those offers to fly in from all these colleges across the country how many offers did you get to play football in college Johnny um, yeah, I was waiting for those. I, when I made the all met team, you know, my head got a little big and I might have gotten a little bit big for my britches and I thought they were going to come, but, uh, didn't happen. Um, when I was in high school, I know I got an offer from UPenn. Um, I got an offer from army and I think that's it. I think those are my two offers. I can't remember any other schools. I know, I know like Syracuse was showing some interest or Coach Kelly was telling me they were the football coach at QO and uh, Pitt was showing interest. But, yeah, I think those are my two offers. That's it. Didn't get one from Navy. Uh, just those two schools. 
What did that do to your ego? What did that do to your dreams of, of playing big time football? Um, I wouldn't say it hurt my ego because I still was like, oh, I have lacrosse going. So maybe I was just – at the time, I think I just thought I was better at lacrosse. Um, but, you know, Navy did a really good job humbling my ego and that sort of thing. <laughs> I, I went into college and I was very, you know, narcissistic and into myself and that sort of thing. And I was humbled very quickly, fortunately. But, uh, you know, just not getting those offers. I mean, I just thought look, football was – out of the picture and I was going to go play lacrosse. I was like, everything happens for a reason. Football's not happening. Maybe I'd go out and, you know, hurt myself or just be miserable. So <laughs> it kind of just turned out to be the other way around. And then I missed football and then things just worked out. So you play lacrosse at Navy, COVID happens, then you end up on the football team there and you play pretty well, including a great game against SMU, which turns out to be pretty important. Um, at that point, were you thinking, okay, it's great at Navy. They've, they've helped me mature and, and, and uh, humble myself. At that point, you said, did you say, I want to play at a bigger time program? Um, I'd say a little bit. I, the main reason I left Navy, it wasn't because I, you know, it wasn't because I was like dreaming of playing bigger time football. It was more so I was just miserable, like mentally, physically. I was having a tough time, uh, you know, on the football team, just being under – how they coached and that sort of thing I was just struggling a lot and it got to a point where my parents were really worried it was going to ruin me for the rest of my life my parents and my friends they they weren't recognizing who I was anymore um I was getting really skinny losing a lot of weight I was looking sick all the time so it was more so a thing just to kind of save my confidence and save you know save myself from who knows what uh, so that's, that's more of the reason I, I entered the portal and got into the portal. Not so much so me dreaming of playing big time football now. Okay. Now, how many people offered you, uh, when you entered the portal? Uh, I got an offer from TCU and then the day after TCU offered me, I got an offer from Towson. So those two schools, two schools. And then you decide to go to TCU. Why? Cause it was power five and you know, big time football. And Sonny it's cool. Dykes. It's cool too. Yeah. And Sonny Dykes had obviously seen you play. I think it was the Navy SMU game where you had maybe your best game to that point. And how much did that have a uh, effect on him recruiting you and you going to play for him? Um, I mean, I think it had a pretty good effect. Obviously, I had a good game that game, but I was in contact and stuff with uh, Coach Gillespie, our defensive coordinator. So, uh, mm-hmm. Coach Gillespie, he was the defensive coordinator at Tulsa, right? And I know SMU was my best game, but Tulsa was my second best game. I had a, okay. I think I had a forced fumble, like a strip sack, and I had a bunch of big hits. Um, so I was really getting in contact with him. Coach Dykes had just gotten hired, and he was just so busy with interviews and stuff. I don't even know if he ever saw uh, my emails to him, like me reaching out to him. And then uh, – but Coach D- or Coach Gillespie was the one who I got in contact with. He called me and reached out to me. So I definitely think the SMU uh, game had a pretty big impact because when Gillespie probably brought me up to Coach Dykes, he was like, oh, yeah, I remember that kid. Let's bring him on. But uh, I think the Tulsa game ultimately, you know, got me here. I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. They, they okay. offered me. They didn't tell me why. They, they, uh, they, they thought I was good enough. They believed in me. That's why. Yeah. And then you go to TCU, and you're not just one of the guys. You're one of the leaders, one of the, le- the leading tackler, newcomer of the year in the Big 12. So um, how, how much of an um, uh, adjustment was that from, from you, at least from the outside? It didn't look like it was much of an adjustment because of, you know, how you played. But how much was that an adjustment for you? Um, I don't know. I've always kind of just tried to lead by example. I'm never going in the locker room or going up to guys like, trying to hype them up or telling them what to do, what they should do, what they shouldn't do. I just go with the flow. And uh, I think people, I just started kind of, you know, leaning on me just because of how I approach every workout, how I approach mm-hmm. practice, how I approach film, how I approach game days, how I played in games, how I stayed calm during games, regardless of what was going on. And I think that's what kind of got me into the leadership position. But I just came every day with the, you know, the mindset of, okay, no one else believed in me. So I got to prove everyone wrong one. Yeah. And then, at the same time, this is the only school that believed in me. So I got to bring everything I can possibly bring every day because they're the only ones that took a shot on me. They need me to do well. So mm-hmm. um, I don't think I really uh, tried to get in a leadership position. I don't even think of myself as leader. I just think of myself as a kid on the team. And I just, you know, 
try to do things and lead by example. And then uh, I owe it to the school and to the coaches and to the people that brought me in to my family to, you know, just bring it every day. I talked to coach Kelly, uh, your coach at the QO about you. And he, you know, obviously you have the athletic ability, otherwise you can't excel in three sports, but he talked about your IQ. Um, have you always been a high IQ person and player and where did that come from? Um, yeah, I guess I, I've always been, you know, I've always been a student of the game. I've always loved watching football. I've always loved watching film. I've always loved watching other teams, other kids play football. So, uh, I guess, yeah, I've always just been an IQ, IQ player. Uh, I think that came from just growing up. I remember my dad and I, my brother, uh, we would always watch like football lives on TV. Mm -hmm. We would record every football all life and then just watch them. And a lot of the players that I looked up to just uh, would talk about their dedication to the game and their love for the game, their love for working out and their love and the high they would get on the fan, like game day experience from the fans. So uh, I was always like, okay, I want to be like these guys. That's what these guys do. These guys aren't the most athletic people in the world. They're not the biggest. They're not the fastest. They're not the strongest, but they're the best. So I want to be like them. And when I was young, you know, relying on the athleticism, but definitely the IQ is what's getting me over the hump now. What uh, What is the most exciting aspect? I know you're you're trying to treat this as a, another game. I get totally get that. But what is the most exciting aspect about your next game on uh, January 9th for you personally? Um, well, I'm not treating it like another game. I mean, it's a championship, but it, it is another game. Like, is what it is. It's another game. Uh, but the most exciting aspect, I don't know. I mean, I get excited for every football game. I guess just playing in, like, a big stadium, a stadium I've never been to. I've only been to L.A. once. I went when I was really little because I have family out there. Uh, but just going experience in a new town, playing in a big stadium, that's pretty exciting. It's a brand new stadium. So that's what I'm probably, you know, most looking forward to. It's probably going to be sick being in there. Absolutely. And then playing the defending national champion, Georgia Bulldogs. What about that part? Well, that too. I mean, it doesn't matter who you play at this stage. Like, everyone's good. I mean, they have a ton of talent. They got a great quarterback who I really respect and just admire his story and his passion for the game. And then everyone else is just big time recruits, big time players. Um, and then, you know, just get an opportunity. Not a lot of people get to get to do They're They've been where we want to be yeah. and no one, you know, no one practices and works out all year to come in second place. So we're both going to go at it, play as hard as we possibly can. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a great game, hard fought battle. You mentioned the quarterback Stetson Bennett. Um, his story is not a lot unlike yours. Uh, walk on, nobody wanted him, that kind of thing. So, uh, do, you, do you feel kind of a kinship uh, with with him in in some ways? Uh, you know, you get you got all these five star guys, uh, and and he is definitely he wasn't one of those guys, and I guess you weren't either. So uh, is there sort of a kinship there in some way? Yeah, of course. I mean, he's a little bit more big time than me, so hopefully he knows who I am. But yeah, you know, I just admire his story. I admire underdogs. I admire people who have been through a lot and then succeed. So just seeing his perseverance and stuff, of course, there's a kinship. I, I really respect him. It's going to be an honor competing against him. I can't wait. Can't wait to talk to him during the game, talk trash, you know, hopefully have a couple of big hits. Hopefully he has a couple of big passes and it'll be, you know, fun time. It'll be great. You mentioned talking trash. So there have been some great trash talkers in the history of sports. Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, to name a couple of, uh, for old guys for, for me. Uh, when, when you're trash talking, what, what is there a strategy to your uh, trash talking? No, no, not at all. I just, you know, I just try to go out there and have fun. And, you know, if someone gets the best of me one play, I'll let them know. I'll be like, hey, that was a great kick step. You, I would not have attacked the quarterback there. That was a good block. But, you know, when I get a good play, I'll be like, oh, you know, got my hands on you there. You got to block me better. You know, got a good hit, buddy. You, you need to get outside. The inside's mine. You know, I, I don't – I'm not looking up, you know, family history and all that stuff. I'm just going out there having fun and playing with a chip on my shoulder, my emotions on my sleeve. And I try to let that show. And I, I talk about it, but I'm not, you know, going to go out there and call out someone's mom or call them a naughty word. I'm just going to go have fun. Uh, I got to ask you about one play in the Michigan game. There are a lot of plays, but there's one play you got called for rough in the passer, which was, I will say it so you don't have to, a ridiculous, ridiculous <laughs> call in any interpretation of the rules. You basically did that to the quarterback, and that was a personal foul, and they actually looked at it, I think, on replay and, and confirmed it. Uh, when, when something like that happens, you didn't look that upset. 
if it had been me, if it had been most people, they probably would have lost their minds. Why did you not get so upset on that, what I call a ridiculous call? Well, one, I was telling JJ this after that. I'm like, dude, there's no way they're going to throw me out for targeting, right? Like, this game's too good. We're playing too well for me to get thrown out for targeting. And he's kind of like, what the hell is this kid talking to me about? One. So I was relieved that it wasn't targeting when they called roughing the passer. So roughing the passer, you're not getting thrown out of the game. That was one. And then two, I think it's just a testament to, you know, I really pride myself on trying to stay calm and collected despite uh, the situation and uh, how big the moment may be. So, I mean, unfortunately, when you play football, like not everything's going to go your way. There's going to be a bad call. There's going to be a couple of times when other teams are doing things better that you're not stopping. So just a testament to be trying to stay cool, calm and collected no matter the moment. So I think those are probably the two reasons. One, because it wasn't targeted. I didn't get thrown out. And then two, just staying calm and collected. Okay. All right. Just a couple things about uh, hometown. So uh, I'm sure you've heard from everybody. Uh, is there something, someone, any message, any conversation that sticks out after the game um, that you can share with us? Um, one message. I don't know. It's just so nice. Uh, having a community just be so proud and happy for you and always believed in you and just been, you know, waiting forever for you to get this kind of chance. And now that you're kind of doing it, just putting them on the map, they're just grateful and I'm grateful to have them in my life. But I'd, I'd obviously have to say Coach Kelly, uh, Coach Moxley, Ernest Moxley, Aaron Moxley, he was my co position coach at Quince, or Quince Orchard when I was a young pup. And uh, just talking to them after the game, just, you know, they, they got me here. Coach Kelly played a huge role in getting me here, reaching out to coaches, helping me out. Um, you know, he was doing a lot behind the scenes when I knew I was done with my dad, just because, you know, he loves his players and I'm one of his favorites and it feels great. So I would just say, you know, live in those moments with th those that are really close to me, former coaches that have big fans and stuff like that, just, you know, not forgetting about them and then just hearing back from them just it's been awesome. It's been awesome. But yeah, I, I wouldn't say one moment, but obviously one, one of those two people uh, outside of family. Um, any message for your fans, friends that you probably you may not have time to talk to yet because you're preparing for a big game? Any message for folks back home that'll be watching on January 9th? Um, any message? Any message? I, other than I just say go frogs, you know, go frogs, but uh, yeah, I'm just really thankful for them and really thankful for the community and just completely blessed to grow up in such a good area with, you know, people that just love seeing people, you know, succeed. And a lot of people don't get put on a big athletic stage like I do. And the ones that do, it's just, you know, Jake Funk, like the whole community is rallying behind him. And I feel like it's kind of being the same way. So it's a little bit of a burden, but at the same time, it's like, I get to do this for people who love me and could care less if I do anything good. So just thank you. Go frogs. And thanks for the support. It's just been, it's been awesome. And all right. Have you allowed yourself to think what if, you know, when we be Georgia, what that will be like, have you allowed yourself a moment to think that at this point? Um, I'd say a little bit. Uh, I'm big on visualizing, uh, games visualizing plays visualizing what you want to happen so obviously i'm going to dream about that because that's what i want to happen but uh i mean i'm not going out there like publicly saying oh yeah we're going to beat georgia now no i'm we're going to go out play our tails off and i'm visualizing us us winning yes because that's what i want to happen so um in a nutshell yes but really not i'm not going out there cocky i'm going out there confident not cocky Johnny, thank you so much. Congratulations to get to this point. Best of luck in the game January 9th and beyond. Really appreciate you taking time to talk to us today. Oh, of course, of course. Anything for for a Maryland, you know, news, news source. So, of course. Thank you. That's uh, Johnny Hodges. I'm Joe Yashroff, Director of Content at Montgomery Community Media, and this has been MoCo's Most Famous. We'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.